Hello everyone. To many of us, today's gospel is probably one of the simplest and most familiar stories from the Bible. The story goes that as Jesus was traveling through Samaria and Galilee, at a village entrance, ten lepers approached him but kept their distance. During Jesus' time, lepers were society's despised outcasts. They were compelled to live outside villages and under all circumstances stay as far away from all healthy people as possible. If and when they came near other people, they had to cry out, Unclean! Unclean! Else anyone they touched also became unclean. That's why these ten lepers called out to Jesus from a distance saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Friends, this was not the first time that Jesus had met people with leprosy. In Luke chapter 5, we read about a leper who fell on his knees with his face to the ground and begged to Jesus, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. With all tenderness and love, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched the man, and he was immediately healed. Jesus then instructed the man not to tell anyone what had happened, but to go and show himself to the priest and offer sacrifices as Moses had commanded. According to the law of Moses, the priest had the authority to declare a leper clean so that he could return to his family and fully integrate into the society again. Friends, but here in today's story, when Jesus heard the lepers shout, rather than drawing near to touch them, he turned to them and simply responded with instructions to go and show themselves to the priests. However, there would be no point in such action unless they were cleansed of their leprosy. Even though at this point they were not cleansed yet, they obeyed Jesus' command anyway. The text says that as they were going to the priests, all the ten lepers were healed of their condition. Clearly, this was a reward for their obedience to Jesus' command. But surprisingly, only one of the ten cured lepers returned to give thanks to Jesus, and he was a Samaritan. Friends, in the time of Jesus, Samaritans were generally considered a mixed race and half Jews, and were treated as outcasts or foreigners by Jews. Moreover, the Jews hated the Samaritans so much that they believed them all to be possessed by demons. Friends, here in the story, the Samaritan's return to see Jesus was more significant than the healing itself because the nine lepers, who were so intent on fulfilling the law to the letter, went to their priest, whereas the Samaritan returned to fulfill the spirit of the law, to pay God back. The Samaritan's first encounter with Jesus was at a distance, but the second meeting was one-on-one, -on -one, which certainly must have brought him a much deeper healing and a sense of inner peace, for he heard Jesus declaring that his faith had saved him. Yes, the second time, the Samaritan received not just a physical healing, but also the healing of emotional and spiritual wounds which liberated him from his negative emotions such as anger and hatred toward those who had alienated and abandoned him and thus completely transformed his life. He was fully restored in his relationship both with God and others. Friends, there are many lessons that can be learned from this story. 1. Like leprosy, Sin makes us unclean before God and others. In addition, sin distances and ruptures our relationship with God and others. 
Sometimes we can feel this in our own families. Because of sin, we can feel alienated from our family members as well as from God. For instance, when we are offended or betrayed or deceived by our own family members and friends, we can become estranged from them and feel less connected to them. Some people can remain in this uncomfortable estrangement state for a number of days, weeks, months and even years. In these times, the pain is much greater than when someone else breaks our heart. So, we can say clearly that our sinful condition largely affects our interaction and relationship with others. However, just as only God could heal the dreaded disease of leprosy then, so only God can cleanse us from sin and reconcile us to himself and to each other and give us the inner peace we seek. Therefore, friends, let us humbly, first of all, acknowledge our desperate sinful condition before God and really call out to Jesus as the ten lepers did that we are unclean and we are in need of his mercy. 2. The lepers knew Jesus by name, but they called him Master, acknowledging his authority over their disease and them. Jesus existed as one with the Father and the Holy Spirit, as a distinct God before anything came into existence, and therefore as the master of creation, he has authority over all created things. Hence, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we must acknowledge and recognize him to be our life giver, our ruler and our master. Friends, let us courageously and confidently raise our voice and cry out to him in our time of need. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us and our gracious Lord Jesus, who is full of mercy, will come to our rescue. 3. Jesus heard their cry and told the lepers to go to the priest even before he had healed them. Then as they went on their way, they found they were cured. Without any evidence of healing, they obeyed Jesus' word because they knew Jesus was their only hope and he could make their disease go away. Friends, just as these lepers did, we too must have a personal abiding faith in God. The only condition to obtain God's grace is to acknowledge our sinfulness and obey his word for he says, whoever believes in his son Jesus will not perish but have eternal life. 4. Only one of the lepers, a Samaritan, returned to give thanks to Jesus. The last time the leper had stood far away from Jesus and called out to him, but this time he came back, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell at Jesus' feet with his face down and gave thanks to him. Friends, like the leper, we should not only ask Jesus for things, but also go back to the proper place of worship to literally prostrate before God and publicly and loudly sing praises and give thanks to the Lord for His goodness. For example, we must join the Universal Church in singing loudly the Gloria, which is one of the most beautiful prayers in the Mass. Through our faith and obedience, let us receive healing and wholeness of body and spirit, peace and friendship, with others and God. Amen. God bless you.